you better recognize who you're doing business with. Regardless whether they come to you with need, service, demand, clientele base. That's what today's topic is all about. Knowing who you're dealing with. Because you can be dealing with someone who is very unstable, who comes in with the sabotaging mentality that want to take over what it is you're doing because they, they're miserable. Misery loves company. Welcome to Chronicles of a Nonprofit, episode 65, where we talk about the highs and lows of business and what entrepreneurs and leaders in their life are going to experience, whether they like it or not. You're never going to be able to put a cookie cutter person into an agreement. Just because the rules are there does not mean the rules will be followed. So what do you do? This is a pre-recorded segment. I wanted to get on. I needed to have this available. All of the podcasts for Chronicles of a Nonprofit are available and premiering at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Monday through Friday. So the question is, should your good be negatively spoken because misery loves company? No matter how many engagements you have with your credentials, no matter how many engagements you have with rules, regulations, and guidelines, people are going to always see how much they can get away with, especially if they're manipulative. And there's always a reason why someone would choose to be manipulative when someone is giving them an opportunity to grow, an opportunity for a second chance, an opportunity for the engagement to rise above their circumstance and situation. And that's what we're talking about today. You know, I had a client from upstate who calls and wants me to embrace and attach myself to something that is not part of the agreement and the rules. See, when you set rules and guidelines and standards, the very people that break the rules, when it's inconvenient for them, they want to decide to come back and tell you that you breached contract because you did not acknowledge the fact that the rule was broken. But what happens in the state of Ohio through eviction court? They tell you, we're going to give you six months and then you go and find this and you go and do that. And we got to give you housing and, you know, we got to make sure that no, absolutely not. There is no such reason For an eviction, anything, if you have the guidelines, the rules to follow, and you realize you're following them, and the reality is, if you don't follow them, you've breached contract. Your items can be gone. Your items will be gone. Why? Because an agreement trumps all things, even though the law states this, an agreement is just that. Breach that agreement, that is the very time that the agreement is null and void in court. And don't even think about the rules of making sure that people are in a position of safety. And if it's constructive, if it is constructive, again, entrepreneurs, listen, if it is constructive, you do not have to wait for eviction. You do not have to, you know, worry about breaching an agreement in any way, shape or form. Why? Because the law is set up to protect those innocent people surrounding the equation. All because one person chooses to disassociate the law and the rules because they don't know how to follow rules in the beginning. 
mindfulness, carefulness, discernment, intuition. See, entrepreneurs, you're going to go through meeting these type of people in your career. Mark my words. Within the first year, you're going to meet at least one of those individuals who want to break the rules, breach the agreement, manipulate and use words against you, try to use the court system as a means of protection with the hopes that you're not intelligent enough to know the laws. Basic leadership individuals who run their own lives, pay their own bills, and work a regular nine to five. You're going to meet these individuals who are going to do that to you as well. How do we prepare and protect ourselves from the crafty, limiting, miserable individual who is coming to devour um, because they need something and the minute they no longer need it, everything must stop. Everything, no matter what it is you do, no matter how much you've helped, everything stops until they feel as though it is time to challenge or to grow. That's very sad. And to those entrepreneurs who are listening to this podcast, I want you to understand, knowing the law in the field in which you are a part of, whether you're in home health care, whether you're in uh, helping second chance individuals, whether you are helping nonprofit, whether you are a for-profit, whether you're a barber, whether you are a daycare worker, a daycare imp- uh, uh, um, entrepreneur, you better recognize what I'm saying. You better heed what I say to you. Some parents, I've seen cases where parents did not want to pay the child care bill and something happened with the process of their insurance And in order for them to get away from having to pay the bill, they would lie on the daycare worker. Just so they could get something in return. Even though the daycare worker did nothing wrong. It's just that this is a quick, easy way to make a few bucks And this is what I have to do in order to pursue this. So I'm going to do this. And now you're putting everybody in harm's way. You're putting people's careers in jeopardy. You're putting people's livelihoods in jeopardy. You're putting people's freedoms in jeopardy. Just because you want to make a quick, fast situation. But what happens when we know the law? What happens when we do our research? What happens when the very thing, the very joke, the very manipulative, the very corrupt, the very caring thing that's being done happens and we throw it back in the face of the perpetrator? What happens then? <laughs> And this is where we're talking. This is what we're talking about right here. So Upstate gives me a call and tells me I should not have done A, B, and C. Well, how can you tell an entrepreneur how to run their business if they're in the confines of the square of the contract agreement? That goes to show you, number one, you're dealing with someone who is not stable. So it is exactly that. This is what it is. This is what it was. And this is what it will be. Period. 
again, no matter what field of expertise in which you entrepreneur, this is what it is, this is what it was, and this is what it now will be because it wasn't supposed to be what it was because it was supposed to be what it is. And if we have to make rules make sense, then we'll do just that. One person can fall out of line and can divide an entire household. Not fair. That's why immediately situations should be handled. There is no wait until later, wait until the end, wait until wait. No, 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 wait breaks the wagon. Because what will happen is you'll have someone living in your location with unauthorized occupants who's now causing havoc and hell for everyone in the house. And because you did not handle it at the onset, the minute that the agreement was breached and you continue to take money, money sometimes is all money is not good money. And anyone who would allow that to take place, anyone who of authority, who is a partner in business, who would allow that to take place just to pay a bill, just for money to come in, they're the devil themselves. Because not being in the mix, not having to deal with the immediacy of everything that takes place, and then putting stumbling blocks in the way, putting and allowing things to take place, it seems like it's a defamatory excuse to try to sabotage, possibly, to try to manipulate, even within itself. Because all money is not good money. And if one person does not follow the rules, what gives the individual the right to believe that this will not become a harsher situation to deal with later in as time goes on, later in the agreement. That's why agreements are written. That's why things are signed. These are the rules that we must adhere to. Unless, of course, we choose to want a circus. If we say that there is a certification that's needed in order to be in a position of employment at this particular barbershop, and we let people come off the street because they know how to design a certain way, but they don't have the skill set necessary to be professional in that industry, and they want to push people off the chairs, they want to bum rush, they want to, you know, come to work smelling bad, reeking of whatever they did the night before, but because they can cut hair good, hmm, we going to get this money, huh? All money is not good money because the reputation of what has happened is now on the line. So I want you to pay attention to this, entrepreneurs, because this is what I'm dealing with personally right now. Right now. So how do we handle these scenarios of breached agreements? How do we deal with a breaching of an agreement? How to deal with a breach of an agreement? Hmm. 
Now, if you're a retail specialist and you are managing a store, the breach of contract would be reducing item prices to remedy a defect in the product. Giving compensation for damaged and interest for a delay. It's going to be some serious contracts, contract consequences in those matters. You know, so breaching contracts on a more retail basis, Amazon, eBay, Content creating. There are some things involved in that. But when you have and you have set a standard of appropriation to the way that you're going to handle your homes, your housing, your uh, institutions, your daycares, your churches, your nonprofits, your for-profits, your um, transportation companies, your hairstyle bars, your eyelash companies. When you do these standard policies and procedures, do not go against them. Because the second you do is the minute that the contract has been breached and everything else is out the window. And you lose respect. I feel like Respect has been lost. I feel as though control has been lost. And the ability to allow someone to see things clearly has been lost. So either one or two things are going to happen. It's going to continue on or it's going to immediately stop based upon an action that must be taken by the individual in question, by the entrepreneur. It's not always going to be easy. It's not always going to be fun. It's not always going to be happy. Sometimes we're going to have to say the thing to piss people off. Sometimes we're going to have to do the things that piss people off. Sometimes we're going to just have to cover our own asses. And that's what my supervisor would always tell me when I worked for the police department. Cover your own ass. Meaning every step you take, every move you make, expect that someone is trying to take your next step. Just steal it right from under your foot. So in that case, you pretend that everyone is a potential opportunity to steal your step. And if you can do that and you can move in unison with that, you will never have an issue. You will never have an issue. That's why everyone must be on board when people are working with one another. There should be no division, ever. Never. And I'm learning this, and I'm paying attention to partnerships. I'm paying attention to the reality of what I am enduring, what I am encompassing, what I'm feeling. And I'm asking myself, is it worth it? The hard work that needs to be fostered and administered, to what degree does it make me feel secure? There was a time when I first started out, I was l working for my Medicaid licensing certification. And I had hired someone. And I had paid $17 an hour to prepare this Medicaid insurance application to put together some documents, some work. Well, when I paid that amount for the X amount of hours in which I was willing to pay, at the very onset, because the person did not know what they were doing, they were not capable of doing the job correctly, this person came back and told me, in order for me to do what you wanted me to do, I had to go and undo some things that I didn't know about. 
Sounds like a bunch of bullshit, right? Because that's exactly what it was. Like I told her, if you had no idea what you were doing to sit there and get paid to do nothing and still not get the certification application form that we needed, that meant you did not do the job. Oh, but because she sat down to the table and used the amount of time that it took in order to do what she did, it bullied, she bullied me into paying her by threatening to take me to court. I did what I needed to do, but I realized at that given moment, people will play you for anything and they will give you the sob story. They'll tell you how sick their children are. They'll tell you how their husbands and wives or wives are abusing them. They'll tell you all the stories and the shenanigans that make life what it is just to get your approval to give them something to be able to manipulate you with. This is the mindset. This is the mindset. So the breaching of contract is valuable to pay attention to. It is important. And I am going to re-listen to this podcast a hundred times until I get that in my mind. I will put it on replay. And I will listen to it a hundred times until I get that. And it's not about the money. It's not even about paying a bill to help other people. It's about doing what's right. And all money is not good money. And making sure that others understand the value of what a good name represents and how to keep that good name good and how to see the manipulator for who they are when they come to the door waiting for your services. Thank you so much for being a part of this podcast. Thank you so much for listening to this pre recording. Please, if you have anything to add to it, please put it in the comment box below. If you would like a personal conversation with me, please give me a call at 330-956-0511. Or you can email me at scales2successllc at gmail.com. That's S-C-A-L-E-S-T-O-S-U-C-C-E-S-S-L-L-C at gmail.com. As always, be consistent. Always be on time and be prepared for all things and anything that could and will show up. And always remember you are the greatest version of the one walking in your shoes today. And as always, be blessed.